two. But lately, One. it's just Whoa. like, I just can't count this guy out. And yeah, that's <laughs> that's really been the key now. There were some misses for Radish at DreamHack San Diego coming in 25th place. But like right before that, top eight at Spring Championship. Right before that, of course, got second place at the Winter Royale. So it has been several months since then, but it's also been a couple months since San Diego as well. So yeah. really, we're going to see right here what he's been building up since San Diego. Now, Radish is known to be one of those slower players. He can definitely slow things down and so far, Lorez is pacing this in a way that Radish isn't dealing very, very well with. Yeah. And I mean, it's also one of those scenarios, too, where, like, I mean, it's no disrespect to Radish, because this is a very hard game to win a world championship in, right? He may never win a world championship, but they could very well beat your favorite players yep. any day of the week. <laughs> so, and the, <laughs> the funny thing about Brawlhalla is, in terms of 1v1s, like, a very few people have won world championships, even though we've had several. A lot of them have been won by Sandstorm, LDZ, and then like Im Im Impala. Yeah. <laughs> so three people, despite having so many world championships, we've only had three world champions. Yep. But, I mean, there's also still a lot of Brawlhalla left to be played yes, here. Yes, sir. And as we get further into this game, Radish is struggling a little bit, although he's been on the gauntlets pretty much almost the whole time, I feel like. And like he, he's an orb guy. 100% at the end of the day, he is an orb guy through and through. That's really where we know him from. Of course, we know him for the Petra, but especially for that orb. One of the few orb warriors out there. I can't even really think of one off the top of my head. Sometimes people will swap to Petra like Godly, but you don't know Godly for Petra. As we can see, trying to get this orb play going. I mean, has done at least a solid job here of trying to even up the stocks. Now it's just a matter of staying mobile, trying to rack up this damage. And we all know Petra can rack up that damage pretty quick. But Loris has done a great job so far, oh. keeping everything still in his control. He's about halfway through this second stock. Of course, we mentioned earlier, Kaya does have very strong defense. Not the strongest in the game, but definitely some solid defense. Where she lacks is going to be in that strength. But of course, her signatures are still so fast. Mm -hmm. As we continue into this as well, I mean, Laura's, like you mentioned, doing a great job really keeping everything in order here. But Radish, still, you can't count him out. That's a big hit. Not going to quite take the stock here. Keeping that juggle opportunity. Ugh, unfortunate, you aren't going to keep him in the air, but you were able to get an extra hit. Wow, so low. Living. Yeah, it's a low recovery that he picked up. He's going to be looking for either that recovery or probably, of course, the sidelight Sarah True combo. Maybe just a raw Sarah because he built up so much damage at that point. He's only maybe 120 damage behind, which, you know, it's. It's not, a, it's not the most, but it's not a little. So he's going to have to add up that damage. He's doing it so far. Already put out 50 very quickly. Now I believe he's put out 100. Oh! God, this is a too terrifying at the moment. They're even. Skip, they, they are even right now. I mean, that's just the power of Raiders. I'm telling you. He might not be winning immediately, but give him some time. Ah! Nice down here to clean that one up. The huge range that Lorez has, especially with that dare. Now, the orb is going to have solid range with yes. the dare as well, but he didn't have it in his hand there, and it wasn't at the right spot to be able to use that dare. So, Lorez, the falling down there with the perfect range placed perfectly. Yep, and that was actually some pretty close damage, too, if I my eyes were correct here. I mean, I know you're the one with glasses, but sometimes I feel like my eyesight is just not holding up, you know? Well, if we're looking at damage numbers, Skip, yes. 598 coming out from Lorez, 528 okay. coming out from Radish. So, you know, relatively, relatively even between those two, just about a 70 damage difference between them. If we're looking at the damage per engagement, let's see, 33 Three, two, for Lorez, one, 29 four. for Radish. So still, you know, pretty similar between those two, but if you're looking at every single engagement, and Lorez is adding up just four more. Yep. You know, it's not the hugest difference, but it does add up for sure. 100%. All right, but here we go. We're going to see if Raiders can find a way to try and push things back into his favor a little bit. We do see those teardrops. Or sweat drops, excuse me. That we could be crying. I don't know. I want to be crying with a 1-0 lead. Raiders, there we go. Big opening here. <sighs> Tried to go for a gravity cancel. Oh, geez, that's a really tough position here. Can Lorez close it out? Tries to go for the there, but not going to get it. Oh, but finishes up on the right side with that side air. That's a pretty quick one. 
That was an under 40 second KO. I believe it was about 37 seconds yep. to find that first one. Yep. Laura is halfway through this first stock as Radish spawns back in, grabs the gauntlets, starts off with the side air, kind of pacing back and forth, figuring out where he wants to go in. That gauntlet there, very strong, but he doesn't find connection with it. Side light into the recovery. There's the recovery from Laura's as well. Oh. Juggle game coming out. And if I remember correctly, Laura's, uh, we actually talked about when they won game one, they adapted in game two and just played even more dominant. So while Radish, I mean, Ooh. not too far behind, huge dunk to even things up, but still in the orange here. And that was a great choice from Radish. He knew the dodge was gone from Laura's because he gravity canceled the neutral signature to try to give him a little bit of a wall there to recover back to the stage. Normally that down signature is like pretty telegraphed on the edge, but it was so well placed there from Radish. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. I feel like Radish is playing a, a little bit more passive here. I mean, you've mentioned that Classic. he's a, Yeah, I mean, he is a slower player, but I feel like even more passive, and it might just be due to how Loris is playing right now. That's another one down. Another one down, and another one bites the dust. Yeah, if we're talking about pacing, the slower pacing coming out from Radish, I mean, some of the longest sets I think I've ever seen in my career is like Radish and Meg D. Those can drag on. Those are the two types of players that will just grind you down. That endurance really needs to come out when you're dealing with players like Meg D and then definitely when you're dealing with players like Radish, which is probably one of the reasons like Lores wants to end this as quickly as possible. We talked about the Heat getting the Godly. Radish finding the side light side air there for the KO. We talked about the Heat getting the godly earlier the endurance is going to be a big deal for yes. these players and that was a big pickup too fantastic play and relatively evening things up if Raiders can just find one more opening here we could see a pretty solid evening of the game but man Laura just continues to pick up these slight hits small hits nothing too crazy but creating distance for himself yeah you saw him actually moving back completely gets oh. the double outside air is that gonna go yes it does all the way oh, over man. on the edge and I feel like you know the, the, the hands coming up the shrug coming up I feel like that's that's kind of how you got to be if you picked up that yeah. double D light side air all the way on the left side Laura is now up 2-0 against Radish. I feel like that's what you have to feel like losing that game to as well. Ah, that happened. Yeah. Good, good pickup. I got to go to the next game. All right. You got to find a way to turn your mentality around here. I don't know how Radish is feeling, but I can only imagine being down 2-0, especially in a situation like this. Two fantastic players. No one wants to go into the elimination side of bracket too early. Now, in terms of the damage efficiency from Laura's that game, you can see it right there. 514 is what he did. Split that up. We're going to average that across the three stocks. That is 171.3. Repeating, that is great KO efficiency, especially when you're a lower strength legend like Kaya. You turn red at exactly three, two, 150. One, you're not normally four. knocking out at exactly 150. If you, if you just saw D-Light Sayer from the stage, if you had a D-Light Recovery from the stage, you're not knocking out there. So the fact that he's able to do that at 171, damage per stock is impeccable. Yeah. Oh, they're okay. Raid is starting off aggressive here. Uh, kind of turning it up a little bit. And maybe they realize, all right, look, the slow burn isn't exactly the best option here. I got to get a little more aggro. Man, trying to chase him down, too. Kind of playing around that soft platform on the left side. That was the home base for Radish. Now they've moved over onto the right. Lores over on the corner. Radish just kind of playing around that weapon spawn. Doesn't want to engage off stage. Didn't have the range on that side light, but Lores was able to dash in and side light himself. Yeah. There we go. Nice build up right there. I'm trying to keep Lores juggled, but Lores has been really good at getting back to stage, you know, getting back to safety, playing defensive when they need to. Side light, side air, of course, coming yep. out. Radish with just a little bit of a lead here. We're about a minute into this game. That's going to interrupt the recovery, but Radish is able to get back to the main platform, reset his jumps. You see him forward dash, back dash. Just kind of going back and forth. Has stage control. Downsick comes out. Lores wasn't already committed to a signature or anything like that this time, so he's able to just fast fall down to get away from it. Mm -hmm. okay. We got the gauntlets in hand. I feel like we haven't seen a whole lot of gauntlets in the past couple games here. Maybe this is what he needs to really turn this around. Again, strong lead here. Big damage, too. That definitely has been a characteristic of Radish in the past is when, like, a guy I want to win is going up against Radish, and I'm like, yes, Radish has gauntlets in his hand, his weaker weapon. Aha! And then he's like, no, nah, I'm also an extremely competent gauntlet player yeah. as well. <laughs> Very competent. But there we go. Ah. Just unable to even it up. Petra also has quite a bit of defense. She yes. also has very high strength. 
is. Just a bruiser through and through. Ah, missing that one. Will get punished for it. And Laura is able to even up the stocks, but it's not this is a game of stocks here. The percentages are certainly different. We'll see if Raiders can find a way to battle back. Okay, getting the orb back out here. Nice. Yeah, beautiful we played. That turn, Lorez red. This might be it. Oh! The orb toss follow up, bonking him in the head, knocking him out off the left side. Radish, what a fantastic job so far. Has essentially a full stock lead up on Lorez at this moment. But here comes the spear. Is this going to give Lorez the range that he needs to deal with the orb? All right, there we go. Putting on some nice, solid damage here. Ken, Dude, wow. his strength potential is so strong here on this final stock of Lorez. Oh, big opening. See if you can stay on top of that oh. right, a little bit. Had enough active frames to get through the dodge that came out from Radish. Dude, this orb is coming through right now. Radish is finding nice. yep, just the right amount of spacing Play to get win. these hits, but then also close it out. We're going into a game for Sparky. Lorez seems very concentrated. He's going to have to figure out how to adapt to this Raidish Petra, who has already done a great job of adapting to Lorez's Kaya. Can he keep it going, though? Two, one, brawl. That's what it all comes down to. Sticking with the same characters. No character changes at all. I like that. Quick opening right into the gauntlets. And I feel like you need to play with these gauntlets a little bit more, right? Again, quick frame data. You got to get right in the face. But we've been seeing some of these combos that Raiders has been opening up. The bow, man, is just not finding its way in. It's not quite as dominant as we saw previously. He is adding up some decent damage here. Bottom side of that down light, and then Radish picks up three. Lorez picks up the recovery, but right before that, Radish picked up three. Oh, he just happened to side air the wrong direction. They're trading back and forth. Lorez still has just a little bit of a lead. There's the side light side air, gonna even everything up. Yep. Whoa, oh, that's that was close. Been huge. That was very close by the skin of their teeth. Keeping that orb in play here. Yep, dialing it back. Nice! Double recovery, picking up so high in the air. That is going to be the KO off the top. We could see this start to slip away from Lorez. Radish in a great spot. It's a massive lead. Back-to-back -back in lights coming out. Oh, this is getting so intense here. Oh, what's the play? He's got to wrap it up. Yep. Can you close it out, though? Finish it! Ah! Unfortunate, wasn't able to finish their plate, and that means Raiders gets to keep the stock alive here, and they are already quite in the red, too. Yeah, Lorez really struggling to end this one. Even that side here is going to bounce off the main stage, take away some of that force. He gravity canceled just above the bow, D-Light. Lorez does turn it around, still get the KO, but what a beautiful GC D-Light that came out from Radish, anticipating the bow, D-Light from Lorez. Yep. And it is a little unfortunate losing that stock, right? But you got some good damage out there. You can keep that momentum going. Honestly, just being a little bit aggressive here. I think Raiders is definitely putting up the aggro. I think Lorez needs the spear at this point. Yep. The bow is just not making it work. Unfortunately, the weapon spawn is going to come in, but it's as Lorez is spawning back into the game. He's not able to make a move and grab it with iframes. He's being very oh. careful, even when in the sweat beats, and it's a bow. Not going to be what he's looking for until, hold on now, got the turnaround there, got that reset with the second side light the other direction. Okay, he's adding up some good damage here. E -e -e. Getting juggled. This is huge. Oh, Did he reset? Big. He wow. did not reset his jumps. Lorez just barely plucked him out of the air as he was coming in for landing. The landing gear was down. The tires of the plane almost kissed the ground, but not quite. It's crazy because it might be like Lorez is listening to us. I'll show you how to play the bow. I'll show you what I got. <laughs> Good, do it. I like. I, I want Lorez to do really well. He's one of my favorite players right now. So like, yeah, prove me wrong. Go ahead. You doubt me? There is a weapon spawn on the field. No, either player making a huge move for it. Loris is playing around it. Yeah, I feel like Loris wants to kind of play that mid-range a little bit more, right? Especially because you've got the orb in play. Try to poke out here a little bit. Ooh. Oh, that's big. Can he make it back? Loris can end it right Ooh. here. He's up 2-1 in the set. The recovery not going to do it. It was so close. Oh, God, this is a little bit terrifying. Goes for the sick. Not able to get the hit that they need, but the goal is in hand for Radish. Neutral light coming out. Loris sent to the side. He didn't get hit by the side air. Turns around. It's the side air. Radish over on the edge. Oh, my God. 
Please don't do anything crazy, oh, Laura. Please don't. Oh, no. Please don't oh. do anything crazy. Please don't do anything crazy. Dude, it's just so terrifying here. Gets another bow. Oh, Where's the spear? <laughs> Not gonna be able I don't to understand. Take it. <laughs> I swear I've seen him pick up ten bows in a row. Dude, look at that red though. Oh, oh my god. Dude, I'm so afraid this is gonna slip away from Laura's. It's gonna turn into purple soon. Have we ever seen no. purple in this game? Oh, oh he's still living. Laura's trying to find a way down. Another one. Oh my god. Both these players literally on the last possible hits they could ever have. Okay. Oh okay. Good choice win. from Lores there. D-Light in light is true as well. It kills significantly later than D-Light recovery does, but at that point, it did not matter. Look at how much damage he had to do. Oh 639. Lores barely taking that 1-3-1. One, one. Did not want to force it to a game five. I want to see the damage on the other side here too. 508. My goodness, man. Dude, That's efficiency, do, man. Uh, having to do another 130 just to even catch up there. I mean, honestly, they wouldn't need to. It's just a couple hits and probably turn that around. But man, those last interactions really could have been anybody's game. I forgot to breathe at one point. I felt incredibly lightheaded.